I just want to welcome you all again this morning, and I want to welcome everyone online that might be listening to this message later on. Um, I just want to start off by saying I'm not sure how many of you are, are keeping up on the news and what's going on right now, uh, but to say that uh, there, things are really crazy out there would be an understatement. Um, there's a lot of crazy going on out in the world today, not just in Canada, but in the U.S. as well. And I believe that Donald Trump, whether you like him or whether you don't like him, he is right where God wants him to be at this time and place in history. I believe that with all my heart. With the recent assassination attempt against his life last week, I believe that it, with everything inside of me that God has him exactly where he needs to be in his life. And I don't know the exact plan that God has for him. I really don't know. That's not for me to say. But God knows. Amen? He knows what he's doing. He knows the plan that he has for his life. He knows the plan that he has for his future. And he knows the plan that he has for our future. Amen? I don't, um, I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm excited to see and I'm watching very, very, very carefully. But what I do know is that the enemy will not triumph over the sovereign will of God. I know that for sure. Not in Trump's life, not in your life, not in my life. Someone on social media posted that in Leviticus 8, 22 to 24, it says this, I want to read this. It says that at the installation of the priesthood of Israel, Moses was commanded to take some of the blood of the ram and put it on the earlobe of Aaron, which was the right ear, of each and of each of his sons, as well as on the right hand and foot, indicating that what they listened to, the work that they did, and the way they walked should be directly affected by what was there taking place. That was there taking place. There's a lot of things taking place right now out in the, in the political environment um, and in every other environment. I'm not endorsing Trump. I just find that, that what happened to him and that scripture is very, very interesting. So, and it keeps me watching, and it keeps me faithful that God is in control, and I know that he has a plan. So, make no mistake, God is in every detail. He is in every detail of, God, of Trump's life and of our life, of every one of us. God has a plan, he's always had a plan, and his plan will never change. He has that for each and every one of us because we have a God who never changes. He's always the same. He is true to his word. He is just and he is faithful. Amen? Revelations 12 verses 10 to 11. And before I read this, I want to say, is Unique still here? Did she go downstairs? Okay. Unique's word that she spoke out was so timely and so in tune with this message today, all right? So I want you to listen carefully to this scripture as I read it, okay? In relation to what she spoke out. Revelations 12, 10 to 11, I'm going to read this from the NIV, says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren and sisters, who accuses them before God, day and night, has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. By the word of their testimony. The enemy is out to destroy us. Make no mistake. The enemy does not want us to be victorious. All right? And by the way, the, the title of my message today is Triumphing Over the Enemy. Triumphing Over the Enemy. But the enemy is out to destroy us, and he's out there to discourage us, to trip us up, to derail us from the plan that God has for our lives. 
He will use a person or he will use many persons in your life to do this. And he will use situations and he will use circumstances. He will use your past hurt and your past pain, your current hurt, your current pain. He will use all of these things. He will use your failures and he will use your fear of failing in your life to discourage you and to keep you from the best that God has for you. The enemy doesn't care how he derails you. It doesn't matter to him. The only thing that he cares about is that he does. That's it. He is the master manipulator. He is sneaky. He is a pro at getting our focus away from God. And he's good at what he does. He's, he's a, he, I got to give him credit in that area. He's good at what he does. But God is better. God has a plan for your life. And I remember when I was only 19 years old, I was a high school dropout. I didn't finish school, okay? I had no direction. I had no guidance in my life, and I was going nowhere. Quick, very quick. And another, it would be another 10 years before I actually came to the Lord and and started to have a relationship with him and accept Christ into into my life. So I was working in Toronto at the time, and I was in the food industry, And I get a call from this old chef of mine that I worked under when I was here in Stratford. And he says to me, he says, Jerry, he says, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing? Have you ever had anybody ask you, what are you doing with your life? Well, I had him ask me that. He says, what are you doing with your life? And I said, like every young person would say, very profound, I said, nothing. Nothing. And he said, do you want to apprentice? And I said, yeah, well, sure. I wasn't doing anything else. He said, well, then get yourself over here and let's get to work. So I quit my job in Toronto and I came back to Stratford. And when I got to Stratford, I was so excited to tell my parents that I was going to go to college and that I was going to be apprenticing to be a chef. And I felt like for the first time in my life, I had a goal. I had something to shoot for. I had a purpose. I had direction in my life. But I remember my father's face as he said to me, he said, are you you kidding yourself? You go to college? Well, as you can imagine, my excitement quickly turned to discouragement, to doubt, and to self, uh, lack of self-confidence. But something rose up in me at that time as well. Maybe it was pride probably delusion, uh, stubbornness for sure, but honestly I think it was all three that, that rose up at that point in time. But for the first time in my life, I was determined to step out of my comfort zone and go into uncharted territory. That was, it, I don't know why, but, it was, it, but something came over me. Despite the discouragement from the people that were closest to me, the people that I thought would be the most supportive in my life, the ones who I thought would want to encourage me and move me forward and say, yeah, you can do it, Jerry. You can do it. We're behind you. Those were the very ones that, put, that let me down and, and discouraged me. How often does that happen in our life? How often is it that the people that are closest to us can sometimes put us down or discourage us when, we're to, when we want to succeed in, in victory in areas of our life, and yet the, the very ones that we are counting on or the ones we look to are the ones who, who discourage us and put us down? Excuse me. But don't be discouraged. Do not be discouraged, because God will surround you with advocates in your life. He always will. He always does. People who will encourage you, people who will walk alongside of you, people who will build you up and and encourage you through whatever it is that you're walking through, if you allow them to. I want to put that disclaimer in there, if you allow them to. Even when, and especially when, the people in your life that you count on to support you, put, let you down, all right? 
Not even knowing God back then in my life. I didn't know God. I had no idea who God was back then. I really, I knew that there was a God. I, it wasn't like I didn't know that, but I didn't know, I, didn't, I had no relationship with him, and I certainly hadn't invited him into my life. I realized at that point that I had to tune out the voices of the enemy that were saying to me that, no, you can't, Jerry. You're not good enough. You don't qualify. You don't measure up. And listen, I had to listen to the voices of the advocates that God had put around me, even though I didn't even know it was him that did it, okay? The ones that would say, yes, you can. The ones that say, yeah, you can do it. I know you can do it. Just stay the course. Just stay the course. And at that time, I thought, this is, this is I thought it was me at that time. I thought it was me that was being courageous and, and strong and determined, but there was a lot of flesh that was going on back then in my life. And, and it, it was useful at the time, but God did a lot with it later on. It wasn't until much later in life that I realized how powerful of a grip that God had on my life right from the beginning, right from the very beginning, and why he did so the journey had begun at that point, at least that journey. I remember filling out the college application enrollment papers, and the person that was doing the enrolling asked me a question. He said, Jerry, you got, you got grade 12, right? And he was ready to check it off. And I said, kind of shamefully, I said, no, I don't. Oh, he said, okay, well, he said, you got grade 10, right? And I said, no. No, I don't. And he said, Jerry, he says, we can't enroll you unless you would have at least grade 10. And then he said to me, well, and at that point when he said that, you can imagine I was just like, I was so disheartened. And I thought, okay, that's it. It's done. You know, my father was right. I'm never going to ever do this. I'm never going to be able to go to college. Um, who was I to think? that that could ever happen to me. And it was just when I had thought that, that the enemy had put those thoughts in my mind, that he said to me, he said, Jerry, he said, you can read and write, correct? And I said, of course, I can read and write, yes. Maybe I couldn't write very well, but I could. I could at least read and write somewhat at that point in time. And he said, okay, he said, you just got your grade 10. And he checked it off. So, he said, you're going to college. So, my first advocate was a sh an old chef, an old grumpy chef, who saw value in me, enough that he would call me up out of Toronto and ask me if I wanted to apprentice under him and, 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 and get my college degree. My second advocate in this situation was a man who gave me grace when I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve that check mark when it came to getting my grade 10, because I didn't put the work in. I just didn't do that for whatever reason, but that's another story. But I didn't. So now I've gotten over, I've, I, had to, I got over that hurdle in my life, but now I had to get over many more hurdles that came uh, as time went on. You see, I was poor back then. I was very poor. I had no money. My parents had no money. My friends, anyone that I knew, didn't have any money, um, and it was tough. And I had to go. I had to go to college downtown Toronto, and to a place um, where I didn't have any any anywhere to live at that point in time. And I had to literally sleep in my car on the middle of Kensington Marketplace in the middle of Toronto, next to the college, for two weeks before I finally got a hold of an old friend who who took me in for that semester, okay? Another advocate that God put in my life. For the most part, I did well in my subjects in college, but one, which was math. I don't know about you, but math was not my strongest subject. I had no idea what percentages were. I could add and subtract, but I had percentages? How do you even get a percentage? Like, what is that, you know? But if you, if you understand the business world and the culinary world, everything is about percentages, all right? 
food cost percentages, inventory percentages, ratios, yield factors, all of these things require math and a lot of it. So, you're, so you have to know this if you're going to move forward in this industry. So I was swimming in this sea of numbers and I can, I can tell you honestly, I was drowning. All right, I had no idea. But God sent me another advocate. There was a fella in, the, in my class who was very good at numbers. And he seen the struggle that I was having with it. And he came and he walked alongside me. And he showed me how to work out the formulas and to calculate things properly. And I was forever grateful for this, this fella. Praise God. Now, I have more stories that I could tell you about situations where the enemy tried to take me out, okay, along the journey, where I thought to myself that, hmm, why am I doing this? How am I ever going to, to, to accomplish this? I don't belong here. I should just go back to what I know, which wasn't very much, okay? But God brought me through a very challenging time in my life. Being in Toronto with no money was not easy, I'm telling you. There were days where I didn't even eat, okay? Some days. Uh, the being out of my comfort zone was not easy. But God had a bigger plan for my life. How many of you can relate to a situation like this in your life? Where you have been way out of your comfort zone and you weren't sure where you were going or how you were going to get there, but God sent advocates in your life to help you out. And in the end, I'm happy to say that I did graduate and I got my Red Seal diploma. So I was happy about that. And I even went on to get my grade 12 diploma as well later on in life. So God used stepping stones in my life to get me to where it is that he wanted me. Whether, I, even if I thought it was me doing it, which I realize now it wasn't, it was all him and it was all about his grace and his mercy and how he brought other people into my life to get me to where it was that he had and what it was that he had planned for my life. Here's my point. That's just one of my testimonies. That's just one. Many things have happened on the journey of my life that have molded and shaped my future. And many things that have happened in your life were for the same reason, to mold and shape your future, to get you where you are today, but guess what? To get you where it is that God wants you tomorrow, okay? Make no mistake, God is doing something amazing in your life. Whether you think that it's, it's amazing right now or whether you don't. Whether it hurts right now, whether it's, it's painful, whether it's uncomfortable, it doesn't matter. God is doing something in your life to get you to where it is that he wants you to be. Do you believe me? Okay. Many of these things, they came at a cost. Many of them hurt. They hurt. They didn't feel good at all. Many of them were extremely uncomfortable. But at the time, I thought that my life was destined to be this life of just struggle after struggle after struggle. That's what I thought. I honestly believe that, that, that's, that this is my lot in life, you know, to just struggle through every situation. But God had a better plan. Listen, it wasn't until years later and I say, yes, I said years, years later in my life, after I came to the Lord, that I realized how God had everything in my life, and how he used everything in my life to prepare me for the plan that he had for my life. Way before I ever knew him, he was executing his plan in my life through every struggle, through every situation, through every relationship, and through every journey that I was on. He was using it. No matter how hard the enemy tried to discourage me along the way, no matter how hard people that he tried to use to discourage me along the way, it didn't matter. God surrounded me with advocates every time throughout the journey, and he still does. He still does. Every time. But Jesus is our ultimate advocate. Jesus is our ultimate advocate. He is the one who guides us and leads us and directs us. 
We may make our plans, but Jesus determines our steps. We may make our plans, but Jesus determines our steps. Proverbs 16, verse 9. And his goal is to lead us to the fulfillment of the plan that he has for our lives. Now, I want to be clear. I want you to understand this. I don't consider my life to be any better or any worse than yours. This is just my journey that I'm sharing with you. Jesus, there's one thing that every one of us have similar in, the, in common. Every one of us. And that's our willingness to say yes to God. Our willingness to hear, to say, here I am, Lord. Use me. Use me. Our willingness to surrender everything to him. All those three things we all have in common. Every one of us. The enemy tried to convince Israel that life would be better back in Egypt than it would be to go forward in the promise that God had for them in the land of Canaan. That's what the enemy did with Israel, all right? The enemy didn't want Israel to focus on the promise that God had for them in Canaan. The enemy didn't, he want, the, the enemy did this by keeping them more focused on what was happen, happening during the journey to the promised land than the actual promise of what was in the, the promised land and what their life could be like in that, in that promise and in that destination. Listen to this. The most miserable times in my life were when I was more focused on my journey than what I was focused on the promises of God. Those were the most miserable times in my life because I allowed the, the, the things that were happening in the journey to cloud my vision so that I did not see, could not see, and did not remember the promises that God had for me. How do we know about the promises that God has for our life? In the Word. It tells us everywhere. God has a plan and a purpose for our life. And it's, it's a good plan. And it's, it's a fruitful plan. But, we, but when we are not in the Word, when we don't read what God is telling us, then our focus gets more on the things that are going on around us than what it is that, that he's actually promised us at the end of the destination. Amen? When my focus shifted from God to just about everything else around me was the worst time in my life, and it can still be. This is the thing. It can still be. Because we can be so focused on God today and we can be so full of joy and then something happened in our life, a situation, a circumstance, and then all of a sudden we, we, we have amnesia. <laughs> we just forget. And we go right back to where we were, right back to our old situations, right back to the pain, to the hurt, and, and we forget about the promise that God has at the end of the destiny. So what about you? How is your journey? How is, it that, how is it going in your walk in life right now? And what is God doing in your walk? How, is he, how can, you, can you see him using the things that he's using in your life right now, the things that are happening to you? Do you see how God is, is, is using that to help you to get to a greater relationship with him and to come into, into the destiny and the promise that he has for your life. How has the enemy tried to discourage you from keeping your focus on him? Are you caught up in the journey, or are you caught up, are you, in, are you focused on the destination that he has for you? Remember what it says in 1 Peter 5, verse 8. It says, stay alert, watch out. For your great enemy, the devil, he works around, he, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I want you to imagine this. What do you think our lives would be like if we took Jesus out of the equation? I think it would be a lot worse than empty. If Jesus was not our advocate, if Jesus was not here for us, 
and the enemy was prowling around like a roaring lion, who would we have to advocate for us? Who would we have whose power and whose authority would be working in us at that point in time? Our own. And what chance do we have in and of ourselves against the enemy? We don't. But I'll tell you something, through Jesus Christ, we do. So praise God that we do have an advocate called Jesus Christ, who is in our life and who wants to work through us, who has given us power and authority to, to walk through anything that this world, that this life can give us. Anything. He's that powerful. Triumphing over the enemy does not require you to be strong and, be, and powerful. It doesn't, nowhere in the Bible does it say that we need to be strong and we need to be powerful. It requires you to have a strong and powerful king. That's what the Bible talks about. That's who our advocate is. It's not in our own strength that we are going to do anything. It's only through the strength of Jesus Christ that died on the cross for our sins, for, the, for that we might have salvation and that he might even better live his life through you, through us. That is how we live a triumphant life over the enemy. That's how we conquer the enemy. Not through us, not through what we can do, but through what Jesus Christ will do through us. It's always through Christ Whenever we think that we got it, we don't. And God will show us very quickly. But when we trust in him and we give our lives to him and we allow him to have his way in our life, all of a sudden that power and that authority comes alive and it starts to operate through us. And all of a sudden now we see that we can handle these situations that God is allowing to happen in our lives. And it brings us into closer relationship with him. And it gives us the opportunity to show others exactly who this amazing God is that we serve. Because his power and his authority works through us. It works through us. The enemy may be the prince of darkness, but Jesus is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is, the might, he is mighty to save. He is the author of our salvation. He moves mountains. He is the beginning and he is the end. He is all of all in our lives, and he is our life. Say, Jesus is my life. Jesus. The enemy trembles at the mention of his name, Jesus. The enemy trembles because he knows the power and the authority that is behind that name. And we have that same power. and We have that same authority. Church, we need to pick it up. We need to pick it up. And we need to say no to the things that are going on around us, the things, the situations that are taking our focus off of him, that we're keeping our focus on the things that are happening in the journey instead of keeping our focus on the one who has promised, given us his promises and has told us that he has a destination for our life. God wants to bring us all into the land of Canaan. He wants us all to live the victorious life. But I'll tell you that victorious life comes at a cost. And the cost was already paid for. All we need to do now is embrace it and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for saving my life. Thank you for being my all in all. Lord, take my life. I, don't, it, it, I wasn't doing anything with it anyway. Have your way with me and just work through me. Be, be the light that the world needs to see. That's why triumphing over the enemy comes through the power and the authority of Jesus who lives through us. Even in those who may, not have, uh, who may not have confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior yet. And Unique even mentioned that in, in your word. You said, even those who have not come to the Lord yet, don't ever give up on those, pe- those loved ones in your lives that may not know Jesus yet, okay? They, if they worked in my life and they worked in your life before you knew Jesus, guess what? They're working in their life too. So we need to hang on to the promise, all right? Don't get your eyes fixed on the journey of where they are. 
Don't be worrying about that they're not doing this or they're not doing that. Just get on your knees and pray for them. And thank God for what he's doing in their life, even though you don't see it right now. Keep praying for them. Why? Because that's where the power is. That's where the authority is. It's through Christ. It's through our prayers. It's through putting our concerns and our, and our sorrows on him. And all of a sudden, those people, you'll start to see that those loved ones that you love so dearly, those, those ones that you want so desperately to come to Christ, they all of a sudden do. And then you look at the other ones and you say, yeah, but no, well, that one did, but the other one didn't. Well, don't, okay, keep praying. Keep praying. Don't ever give up. Because God has, their time is coming. Their time is coming. Don't be discouraged. Keep praying for them. Keep praying. But until then, declare the truth of Jesus in every situation of your life. Every situation. Say every situation. Every situation of your life. Be praying and declare the truth of Jesus. Be courageous through the journey and stay the course. Stay the course. Don't let the enemy derail you. Don't let the circumstances of your life cloud your judgment and cloud your vision. Keep looking and seeing. what. The, keep your eyes focused on the promises of God and what he says is going to happen in your life. Trust in him to triumph over the enemy in your life and all of your circumstances. We, we don't need to be... I, I remember this one time just praying for this lady and, and she was stamping on the enemy. And I asked her, I said, what are you... I didn't know what she was doing. I asked her, what are you doing? She says, well, I'm stamping on the enemy and, and I'm getting rid of him and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I heard a lot of I'm in there, you know, and I said, you don't have to. The enemy is already defeated. He's already defeated. You just need to believe it. Start believing it. Stop giving the enemy credit where the credit is not due. All right? Start giving credit to Jesus Christ and praise him because he has already done it all. Amen? Amen. Okay. Father, we thank you. I thank you, Lord, for... This word, I thank you, Father, for the worship. I thank you, Lord, for the word that Unique spoke out. I thank you, Lord, for how you orchestrate everything and you bring everything together, Lord. I thank you, Father, how you're working through each and every one of our lives and, and, and how you're working through the journey, Lord. Father, I thank you. And I pray, Father, for this congregation. I pray for those who are listening online that you will give them eyes to see the vision that you have given them, Lord, that they will see the, that not just the journey, not the, the things that are happening, the distractions that the enemy is trying to, put, to send them, but Lord, that they will hang and stand on the truth and the word of your promises in our lives. Lord, that we will move forward as a people who are faithful and, and, and dedicated and trusting and, and just give everything to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for what it is that you're doing in our lives. And I pray, Father, that you will continue to work in a mighty way that will show great fruit in this congregation, great fruit in their lives, great fruit in those who are, who are not saved yet, Father. But our, their time is coming. Their time is coming. Father, I thank you and I praise you for that, Lord. And we thank you in advance for those you are leading, that you are drawing close to you right now. Lord, and we pray for more and more and more in their lives. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Lord, we just praise you. We thank you. We give you the glory, the honor, and we just give you everything, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.